guys, so I'm finally getting around to recording my November wrap up video. I can't believe that it's December, the year has just flown by and even doing these wrap ups it seems I've only just done um, the October wrap up before here I am with the November wrap up, it's crazy. Um, I only read five books in November which for me is terrible, um, I normally at least read seven um, but I'll um, explain why I have only read five um, during the video. But um, the first book that I read in November was A Touch of Crimson by Sylvia Day and I didn't enjoy this at all. The only reason I picked it up was that Lara Adrian, um, the author of the Midnight Breed series, blurbed back and I love Lara Adrian's books, they're my favourite adult series and I've never really seen a book that she's blurbed so I thought, oh, if she's blurbed it, it's bound to be good, right? No, I really didn't enjoy it. I didn't like the protagonists. Um, I really, really didn't like them. I found their whole romance with the situation they were in just completely unbelievable. Their romance was rushed. It was it was pretty bad. I really didn't enjoy it. The only thing that kind of saved it and made me give it 2 out of 5 was that I liked two sort of side characters. Um, a werewolf called Elijah and the vampire leader called Sire. And they seem to have a bit more depth to them. Um, and I think I would read their books. I picked up the sequel at the same time as this and it's Elijah's book. So I think I will read it when I don't know but um, I can't really recommend this. I didn't like it. The next book that I read in November was so welcome after having read A Touch of Crimson and really not enjoying it. So I picked up Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor and this came out on the 8th of November I think and oh my god it's so good so so good I picked up Daughter of Smoke and Bone in October and you guys know I completely devoured it it was just absolutely amazing and the sequel is just as good I don't want to give you guys any spoilers for those that haven't picked this one up yet or haven't read Daughter of Smoke and Bone but this one picks up where um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone um, leaves off and the writing is just as vivid and beautiful. Um, I really, really loved Karu in book one. I thought she was a really strong, kick-ass character and I just loved her. But some of her decisions in this book, I, it made me quite hard to um, still like her. Um, but even though I was like screaming, no, don't do that, literally, I got so into this book. Um, at all times I could still see like why she was making the decisions that she was even though I didn't like them. Um, I know a lot of people's grievances with book one was the romance. The romance in Dora Smoke and Bone is half of the reason I liked it. I thought it was brilliant. Um, but this book is a little heartbreaking for me because of how Dora Smoke and Bone leaves off. Um, so yeah, there isn't so much romance in this one. So yeah. But it was it was heartbreaking for me because I'm just the whole time I'm going they need to be together and and of course they're not <laughs> and it's um it's a bit soul destroying but I'm dying for book three um it was so hard not to spoil this book for you guys but um I wanted because I in when I talk about these books I say that um, Lainey Taylor's writing is beautiful and that she uses um rich imagery and I wanted to give you guys an example of a of a bit that just that I just loved um, to share with you but it was hard not to find a bit with, that was spoilery so I tabbed um, one bit and it's the, begin the beginning of a chapter every now and then you get these and it says once upon a time a girl lived in a sandcastle making monsters to send through a hole in the sky and uh, I just uh, I love Lainey Taylor's writing I love the characters um, I loved that we got more of um, her best friend Susanna's point of view because um, Susanna is the, is the best friend that anyone could ask for. She's loyal, she's she's feisty, she's hilarious. So I'm glad that we got some bits in her point of view. And we got more from Akiva's point of view. Bloody amazing. Five out of five. Um, if you would like to know more of my thoughts on it, even though I have talked quite a bit about this book, um, I'll leave the link to my review below. Um, as always, all the reviews that I put up on my blog 
in the month of November will be below as well. So yeah, the next book that I read was for a blog tour and it was on my Kindle and it's Wildflower by Amy Mora Jones. It was a pretty good book. I got through it in about a day. Um, it's all about uh, basically a tragic love story. Um, a Native American girl fell in love with uh, an English man back in I think it was like the 1600s or something and they were doomed and there was sort of a love triangle and through the years they've sort of been reincarnated and this love triangle has played out and it always ends in tragedy and so then we're in the modern day and it plays out yet again um it's book one in a series um i had a few issues with it Lainey, the protagonist uh sometimes she comes across as really strong and other times she's ridiculously weak she forgave too easily um again that's probably my nature like coming through when people forgive something far too quickly i find it very frustrating especially when it's something pretty terrible um again i had problems with um song lyrics in this book every like every chapter it seems there's just like sometimes two three pages of song lyrics and sometimes when you can have um song lyrics in the book it gives something to that book but not like i don't need the whole song written out just pick a few lines a chorus something meaningful but reading all these song lyrics just frustrated and annoyed me it was very annoying so i'd probably give it 3.5 slash 4 out of 5 i was really torn um but again a review has gone up for that so i'll leave that below if you want to know more about it the next book that i read was the road back by liz harris and this was a really interesting read um it starts off in the um well it starts off with these two sort of childhoods one is cold and he lives kind of, I think it's near the Himalayas. I can't really pronounce where this place is. I've never heard of it, um, but it's apparently north of the Himalayas and I've never even heard of it. Um, and then Patricia, who lives in London, and it sees that they both have sort of harsh childhoods. Colden is like the fourth son. He's going to have no land to farm. He's going to have to become a monk and it's all about him really having to resign himself to being a monk even though he doesn't really want to be and Patricia sort of lives in her brother's shadow her father is a military man and her older brother is basically sick and um, she's basically a disappointment to her father and um, years later they plan a trip to I can't pronounce the place but this place in the Himalayas and she and Cold and me and they fall in love and it's really really sweet I like that the first half of the book we got both Colden and Patricia's points of view and then the second half we didn't get Colden's point of view which I kind of missed I felt like it, it should have been consistent and had both their points of view the whole way through um, but it was definitely interesting I loved the setting um, I gave it four out of five I think again a review for this will be linked below but it was definitely interesting although um, Patricia did bug me in this one as well um, I found her quite weak and quite selfish and yeah she just she just got to me a little bit and the last book that I read in November was Move Over Darling by Christine Stovall I think I'm pronouncing that okay um, this has a beautiful cover it doesn't show up very well on camera but it's like mint green and this is basically just an adult contemporary chick lit um, and I really really enjoyed this I gave this 4.5 out of 5 it was just so cute and funny and so light-hearted that I that I just it was just what I needed at the time and both characters in this ha are running away from something uh, Coralie I think is how you pronounce her name and Gethin Coralie moves to this small town in Wales um, to get over not a romance but a, a tragic accident and Gethin moved away from there to become an artist but um, has to move back to deal with his father's estate 
and they meet and they um, fall for each other and it's all really cute and I love the small village setting where everyone knows everyone's business and it's the old gossiping women um, it was really cute really really fast read um, and if you like chiclet I definitely recommend checking this one out so that's all I read in November like I said I was kind of disappointed that um, that's all I read there were a few books I wanted to get to in November that I've now had to push into December um, what else in November oh I went to see Breaking Dawn part 2 um, I know a lot of people don't like Twilight but I do and I actually went to a midnight show in I've never gone to a midnight show before and I really was worried that I was going to fall asleep but it was absolutely amazing. I went with my best friend and we've gone to see it again since but um, it was brilliant. If anyone's actually seen it you'll know the shock factor. Like me and my best friend were literally sat in shock for like 15 minutes and we're like tears and everything and I know that is sad. Believe me, I know but oh, it was a really really great end to the saga and if there are fans um let me know what you thought of the final film because i for one actually really did enjoy it and yeah um so that's everything that i read um i shall obviously do a december wrap up hopefully i will um be able to get through a little bit more and happy reading